So welcome to the last slot at this FrostCon. And I, I think I want to start with a big thank you for the organizers. What a quite interesting event. I enjoyed being here. Um, so and now let's talk about documentation. Um, yeah. So I'm Christoph. Um, I work for Panagenda, a, a company in uh, Heppenheim, Germany. We have an office in Vienna. Um, oh, I have to thank additional persons. I have to thank my family. Um, Thanks to my girls at home. Hope they see the live stream. Um, so back to me. Um, my main work uh, or my, my daily business is installing and configuring stuff all around application servers. So mostly WebSphere, but some other stuff too. Um, I started with open source software ages ago, last century, uh, around 1995 with Slackware and I never got the switch from VI to, to Emacs. I, I'm just too stupid for this string something um, keystrokes. Uh, I will show some, some code in the slides, it's, but <laughs> be friendly with me. I, I'm an admin. I use a lot of developer stuff, but I'm pretty sure not a developer. So maybe there is optimization potential, potential in, my, in my code. So, how did I create the documentation the last, let's say, 20 years? Um, or other, let's start, what do I want to configure and document? Most of the stuff in the application servers are config options in XML, now JSON, property files. Uh, I saw documentations with hundreds and thousands of screenshots of uh, WebSphere screens. Uh, I don't like to document with, with screenshots or maybe I want to only show automated ones. Um, and the property files are quite long, so they have several hundred lines and we have only, or we normally only change some of them. So it, I like to only include the changed uh, lines in the documentation because it's just easier to read. Um, so the, the last years or the years before I came to that tool, I used Microsoft tools, LibreOffice, synchronized with Dropbox, SharePoint, all, all that crap. We used wikis, we used Evernote. I used Tech, DocBook, that was fun, um, but I never was really happy. Most of the stuff was historic because one of my colleagues developed uh, a way he liked to document. Um, and I just grabbed it, but I, I never was really happy with it. Um, why? My, my needs are, I want to search in my documentation because they have several pages. I have several customers where I have to put the stuff in. What do I want? I want to edit it everywhere. I normally have my mobile with me. I have a web browser on my mobile. May sometimes I use a tablet, a server on a, on a customer side, a server in the cloud, my notebook, or it, it depends. But most all of these devices can do SSH. So that was my smallest um, part where I want to create or edit documentation. I, I don't type a lot, but when I find an error, I want to change that immediately on my mobile phone because otherwise I will forget it. Um, the output formats normally depend on the customer or the project. So sometimes we have office document formats like Word. Sometimes we have PDF or mostly we have PDF, but it can be something else. I like offline support because sometimes I have to document stuff which can break and when the documentation is, is, is stored at that device which is broken, I can't access it. So I, I like to have a copy or an offline copy on, on my machines. I love version control because then I can go back and I use Git for that. And I want to include XML and property files. And the main part is I don't want to do something twice. I, I hate copy and paste from something to an office document, from something to a wiki page, um, or into the documentation. So I, I try to get no manual task in that stuff. So why didn't I like the tools I used? So 
Evernote was quite okay, but um, they switched the license, so I couldn't uh, synchronize all devices I normally use, and I have no access at customer sites. So, uh, and the main part is no markdown support. So I, I dropped that. The Office is a compatibility thing. Um, I had Office documents which just switched the, the page numbering only when I switched a, a printer setting. So switching from one printer to another can just uh, reformat the whole document. I hate that. And copy and paste of screenshots and config files. There is never an actual config file when you use copy and paste. It's always something historic, but not that what's al already running at the customer. So it needs to update immediately or in a short time frame um, when it changes on the server. Yeah, Wiki, it's the same. It's syntax are different. Um, each customer has another one. My I had a customer, I think they had six different wiki engines because each student which they have for a project installed his own wiki, wiki engine. So n not that good to keep something together. Uh, together. Um, how to document the wiki itself, it's, it's crap. And like the other ones, it's always a manual copy and paste. Don't like that. So. Then I started with Markdown and RST, quite cool. It was just text only. Um, I, I could use every editor I, I like to use. There are several um, editors with a preview. Um, I, I like, still like to use it when I, I type notes on my, on my mobile phone. Um, but on some steps, it's just too simple. I can't include easily my property files. Um, and so on. So there, there are some steps miss missing. So I switched to ASCII doc and ASCII doctor. Uh, who knows that project? Okay. Um, so ASCII doctor is the language definition. ASCII doctor is a Ruby project um, which converts our text-only document to a quite good-looking output. Um, I can version control the files. Um, I will show some syntax tips in that session. Later, we will automate thumb, st uh, thumb steps. Um, and when you are interested in the differences to Markdown, just follow that link. I already uploaded the slide deck to the um, conference page, so it should already be available. Um, ASCII doctor knows four doc types. I will mainly talk about the article and book ones, the only difference is an article has just um, one level zero heading. A book can have multiple uh, parts, but you can use inline, inline and man page uh, syntax with ASCII doctor. So quite useful for that too. So I already talked about headings. We know numbered and not numbered headings in ASCII doctor. So we can globally set uh, numbered or explanation mark numbered for uh, not using uh, numbering. And yeah, I already said that the heading one only appears once in an article. It can have mu multiple um, headings in the book one. Each element or figure in uh, ASCII doctor can have an, a special heading. So like uh, included source code, like shown here, or a, an image can have a, a caption beneath the picture. So you, you can have that in a index page, and it's easier to read. So quite useful. My clicker is not working. Oh, now. Uh, numbered lists, so bullet points and numbered lists uh, and definition lists are available. The syntax is yeah, quite easy. A star is just a bullet point, a dot is numbered, and when I use two semicolons, um, I have a description list or definition list. Uh, I use it quite often in documentation, so that's important. We can include links to everything. A link can have a, a text or it's just the, the link itself. Um, we can include images. I, I just jump over that pages. It's just, uh, just a little bit of syntax. You can um, read over the slide deck. Um, there is not a big difference in double semicolons and single ones. Um, 
we can use inline icons, so we can include some font awesome icons like Twitter, Linux, Windows, and so on. It's some, uh, sometimes easier to, to read in the documentation when I just see the icon and I say, okay, that's a Windows one, that's a Linux one. Uh, we can include it with icon, uh, semicolon, and the name. The name can be looked up in the font awesome um, cheat sheet. So you can include everything what's included in that um, font. Oh, and you have to uh, enable it in the docu uh, document header with uh, icons font. Normally, it, or it will write something down. So, admonition blocks. Uh, very important because then you can include a warning, a caption, uh, a caution, important or ju just um, notes or, or informational parts to the documentation. So everybody who reads that sees, okay, that's important, that's not so important, that's an additional one. Um, it's, it's better to, to break down the content. Uh, when you use that with the icon one, um, it's included in PDF and HTML with icons, colored, so it's ju just, just easy to read. Um, new experimental since some versions is uh, menu buttons and keys. So you can include keystrokes, button names, and menus to, to follow when you install something or you any, when you have to switch a, a configuration setting. It's like the same like the points before, it's just easier to read and I hope the user can get it when he, he reads the document. And that's a, uh, one of the most used features when I write a documentation, it's including source code. So just writing down the source code, um, the syntax highlighting, um, the 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 highlighting is, uh, depends on three tools, so you can use Highlight.js, Rouge, or, or Pigments, it works in HTML and PDF. Uh, you can include files here or just write down the, the code li like you want. Normally I include the, the, the file here, but sometimes for s uh, smaller functions it's easier just to write down the code. Um, and now to including files. So. I started putting all configuration settings on servers into Git, so in my version control system, and uh, so I can synchronize it down to my documentation files, and then I just include it with path and file name in the documentation. So when I just use a include path file name with two um, brackets, it includes the whole file. Uh, when I put that into a source part of my uh, documentation, it will format and syntax highlight the, that uh, file. But uh, sometimes I just want to have some lines of the documentation or for, from my included file. So I can use lines. I say, okay, give me line 10 to 15. Or I say, no, give me everything between two tags. And how do I define the tags? Is hopefully here, yeah. So when I include in my document uh, in my source file. I need my mouse pointer here. Um, I start a tag, so it's a, a comment, the tag name, and in the end I use uh, the end tag. So when I, and now I include that in my documentation. I say, okay, please include my file test HTML and the tag is stops. And included in the documentation are just the four lines between my tags. And that can be multiple time in my um, source code. And when I, I normally update something um, in configuration files, I, I do since ages, I add a change date, my name, and where it starts and where it ends. So it wasn't that hard to change that to a tag name. So now I write my tag names, the line after it, I say, okay, Christoph changed that on the 1st of April or something like that. And then that part is included. And so I can just include the change parts of my documentation, uh, change part of my files into the documentation. It's easier to read and everybody knows where it is changed. The only thing uh, 
I miss in the moment is line numbering because when I add line numbering to source parts, it just numbers that lines from one to four. So it does not use the line numbers which are used in the source file. Uh, but I talked with the developers. They said we can do that with a plugin, but I, I had no time to implement that. So, but it should work, and I, I work on that. Callouts. When you have a, a longer source or a, a longer part, it often that I use just a, s a special uh, comment or something like that. So we can include here uh, a comment sign and a number. In the documentation itself, it appears with that one here. And beneath or below the, um, the source, we get the number again and our explanation what happens here. So we will see that again uh, a little bit later. We see at the left side the HTML output, at the right side, is that right? Yeah, at the right side the PDF. Uh, so even when we print it, it's available. Variable definition, here we have the callouts again, so one, two, three. Uh, we can define variables. I use that, for example, for slashes and backslashes. So when I print path, uh, paths in my documentation for Linux and Windows, it always um, have backslash and slash. So I often use just uh, the slash variable here. Um, we define an operating system, so we will later see some if-else statements. So always when we see a variable defined operating system Linux, we get other parts in the documentation printed out than on Windows. So, yeah, you can put that in special files. You can have multiple files and include everything in a main document um, like you want. Um, I normally use that attributes for global definitions, so which I uh, use in all my documentations. The main document is just the, the stuff for the customer. The more is global, but I think special for the customer. And everything with the underscore are variables which I need in the project. So like WebSphere version, operating system, uh, and some, some other stuff. So now to the conditional uh, things. So like that, always when the operating system uh, is Linux, so check if the variable is Linux, print out a Linux icon and rocks. And when it's defined as Windows, just uh, really. So we see the output at the bottom of the page. So uh, tooks and rocks and the Windows sign and really. So just as an example, so you can just say, okay, that part of the documentation only for that operating system and the other part for other ones. And that can be whole, um, really whole part, not only some lines. A uh, quite useful feature is including dia uh, diagrams. Um, formerly, I drawed my network plans with Visio and, and other stuff, so it was separated. It was a proprietary file format. It's not really storable in a version control system. Um, and I, I read some, some years ago about the in, um, DITAA and plant UML in the ASCII doctor documentation. And that's quite useful because there you can define diagrams as ASCII. So like the DITAA thing, or plant UML, and it will create I at, at runtime the network plan. Um, so it's just ASCII doc, uh, or it's just ASCII text, or text only. We can store it simply in a version control system. We can use variables in that part. And in the end, when I render my document, it will, it will render the, the image or the, the network plan. So it's always up to date when we change something. It's um, more up to date than every Visio sheet I ever saw. Um, flow, di uh, flow diagrams, the same as the network plan. Uh, easier to read than writing pages of text and renders on at runtime or always when we create the, the document. Same for tables. We can define tables, 
quite easy syntax. It's just a pipe and, and the name, some co um, column definitions. That's everything. Um, and now let's create the, the automation with a CI/CD pipeline. Last year, I know uh, I created my documentation mostly manually. So always, when I created a document, I started a program on my or uh, typed the command on my uh, console, and it creates a PDF or it creates an HTML. I have to remember the syntax. Then I started doing make files. I played with Gradle. I'm, as I said, I'm an administrator. And I have no clue from Gradle, so I, I dropped that, and. Now I use GitLab with Git and the CI CD pli uh, pipeline included in that. So I can put some of my stuff, which is public, uh, on the public GitLab and the other stuff on our Kubernetes deployment in the company. Um, all code I show in that talk is available at that Git uh, GitLab URL. It's public, so you can just um, fork it. And now let's start with the document header of the main document. We have in the first line a document title, author email. Point two is we define a language. The language is cool with the attributes um, file I, I showed before or the content I will show later. Um, so we have uh, translations for stuff like index, Inhaltsverzeichnis, Kapitel, chapter and so on. So it, it always depends on the language. Um, I include a title logo. I define an image directory at point six. We want to have a table of contents at five. We want to use fonts for icons. Source highlighter is rouge. And we have numbered um, headings. Uh, just yeah, j j just just read it. I will show what what, it, uh, what the output differ when we change something later. Um, the attribute file I already said, like um, this one is German, so we see it's this way. Now it's away. Um, this is on. Batteries on. Ah, now it's back. Um, so that's a. German uh, translation file, so you see when there is a caution part, it will show Achtung, it will show Kapitel as chapter, and so on. Yeah, Beispiel, for example, uh, same thing for, um, for English. These files can be downloaded directly at the ASCII Doctor project. Um, just use it. So preface, that's just for information. Now uh, a condition. As I showed before, I have normally a variable file where I type in stuff like, OK, I installed a WebSphere application server 8557, or I installed a database version 11.164. And so I define uh, a condition where it says, OK, when the version is smaller than 8.556, then print a, print a warning, do an update. So I can just update the the preference file or the proper uh, property file, because when I, I say OK, and now it's away again. <laughs> Should I take that one? <laughs> Tut aber noch net. Doch jetzt. Um, so, uh, where? It is there. No. Um, so we can just update the, the property file and we'll get the warning on each uh, new generated documentation. We already saw that when we have always the same configuration command, like um, in WebSphere, it's a WS admin command. You can call a WS admin dot batch or a dot sh depending on the operating system. So I I did, uh, put in a condition like, okay, when the variable is Linux, please write down the dot sh command, and in the other stuff the the batch one. So one general document for the for all documentations. I have only update one of the files and not everything. Um, 
including configuration files. As I said, I normally uh, replicate the configuration of my customers into Git. Um, when you want to include uh, a Git repository in another one, the easiest one is just to add a sub-module. So you have one Git at the sub-module and it will update again. We will see that a little bit later when we see the the Docker file for ASCII Doctor, which I use for creating the documentation. So, and what outputs can we build from or from ASCII Doctor source? It's it's a lot. It's mainly HTML5. It's PDF. We can do um, EPUB. We can create docbook. We can create Confluence Wiki. So you can write directly from your CI CD pipeline into a Confluence wiki and we crea can create presentation files like that one. So that's a Reveal.js presentation and the source was ASCII Doctor. When you want to see all possible um, outputs, just use that link um, on the slide. And when you need more, so like converting ASCII Doctor to an Office document, you can always use Pandoc. Um, so with Pandoc, you can create nearly everything from source code Markdown to ASCII Doctor, from ASCII Doctor to Microsoft something and so on. Quite useful. Not sure if it's available for Windows, but we are at an uh, open source conference. So now, nee. okay. It's strange to have um, a microphone. Um, that's all here. We can use themes. Uh, I implemented multiple themes in that CI CD pipeline. So, depending on the folder where the source document stays, it's a working theme or my private one. So, when I uh, put a ASCII Doctor source into the working directory, I will get my company logo and uh, my company email address. And when I uh, put it into my personal one, it's my private mail address and so on without a logo. Uh, or you create some CSS files for the HTML themes. And the main thing, yeah, that's the reason why I used the title of the, um, the talk. It's text only. You can use the editor of your choice. So I like to use VI, but you can use Emacs, you can use Notepad++, you can use Atom, VS Code, or something else. I wouldn't use the standard Windows ones, but I, I read somewhere that the new Notepad should be a little bit better now, but no clue about that. So mobile, when you have a I have no idea about the, the Apple stuff, but um, on Android you can use just ter uh, Termux and include uh, VI and Git when you want to edit the documentation. You can use your browser interface to access GitHub or GitLab and so on. So I can really edit or change stuff on my mobile. Preview. I often get the question, how do you write that without a preview? Uh, after some years writing uh, ASCII Doctor, I am pretty sh or I, I think I know what the, the end result will be. But when you need something like a preview, there is a built-in preview in F uh, VS Code. There are browser extensions available which render ASCII Doc on the fly. Uh, you can use a make file and uh, the browser. You can use guard file with guard, which always um, generates new outputs when the file changes. So there are several options for that available. So converting. You can install ASCII Doctor on your machine, or you can, yeah, so it's Ruby gem. I think gem install ASCII Doctor, or gem install ASCII Doctor um, PDF uh, will give you these commands. So I convert my ASCII Doctor source with ASCII Doctor file name ASCII doc extension and it will generate HTML. When I use the ASCII doctor PDF one, it will generate a PDF. Um, you need to think about, uh, no, Gem will install dependencies, but sometimes I'm, I'm not sure what they are doing there. As I said, not a developer. Uh, I, I had issues with dependencies. So what I like to do is converting with a Docker image. 
There is a Docker image available from SK Doctor, so you can use the one provided at GitHub, or you can create your own one with um, with a Docker file on the SK Doctor project. The main advantage is it runs everywhere where Docker is running, so you can use it on your Windows machine, Linux, and Mac. Uh, all dependencies are included, um, the updates um, are there in time, and I think it fits perfectly in a CI CD scenario because when we use it at GitLab, we just generate the, the Docker image and use it in our pipeline. And to convert a, a local file um, with, the, with the Docker image, just with a Docker run, the minus minus rm is um, delete the image or delete the container when the command is finish, finished. The dollar pwd is use the, lo the local folder and mount it into the volume documents. The sgdoctor slash sgdoctor is the image name and everything after the slash sgdoctor is the command which is run in the container. So we run the sgdoctor main adoc and it will generate an HTML file and put it in our um, actual path or in the folder we are staying already. Ah, there it's explained. <laughs> um, okay, RM was deleting the container after run. I think that's pretty much all. Yeah. So four and five are the commands which we start within the container. Um, creating the different outputs, though there are the commands for creating HTML, HTML with diagram. So you see when you add a minus R and this ASCII doctor diagram, it will render the diagram stuff. Um, we will we do the PDF ones, and the last one is when we want to update a Confluence wiki, we just put the host name, password, and username there. Um, it will create the page um, when it's not there, and it will get updated when we use the minus minus update in the command. I have no Confluence wiki in the moment, so I can't show that, but it should work. As I said, you can use Gradle. I have no clue about that. Um, we will use CI CD with GitLab. I think um, it's it's very good because you can use the the hosted one or you host it on your your own. Um, I convert my documentation on every commit. You can only or you can create a CI CD pipeline which converts when a file changes. So only updating documents where really was a change or generate a document or documentation for all um, available documents. And in the end, we will deploy the documentation files on Git pages. But you're open to publish it everywhere. You can upload it with FTP to a web server. You can send a mail. You can use the artifacts wherever you want. So it's, it's just easy. Um, to put outputs depending on a folder to customers, uh, to a wiki, or something like that. So, how do we start getting um, a GitLab CI CD pipeline? <coughs> the easiest way is creating a .gitlab CI YAML file. YAML is that which um, always puts in two spaces in front of the, the lines. It's sometimes really hard to read and write, but um, with the right editor, it's 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 quite quite good to to create. Um, that's the repository I used. I show that live. That's easier. Eleven. So that's our project, and we see the submodule Docker ASCII doctor here. So here we include the Docker file. We have a folder documents personal and the documents work. We have one image directory which will be used with all um, document folders. So we have images only stored one time in the project. I have a PDF theme, a folder for presentations, and um, public is. What happened now? Public is the one where we store the, the web files. So for um, uploading it to Git pages, I added a script folder here. There are just the 
um, shell scripts with the uh, conversion command. So I, I do a for loop on all documents in a folder and then ran the ASCII doctor commands. It was easier to put that into a shell script than putting it into the CI CD pipeline. So now to our pipeline. Where is it? Here it is. So first of all, uh, can you read that or should I extend the font size? Good, good. Okay. So first line, we used the Docker image of uh, GitLab and we used the service DIND, it's Docker in Docker. So we, we start Docker images in a Docker image. That's um, a service of GitLab. I define two variables, it's just for creating the container um, because I want to test the container image first and only when the tests are working I deploy it into the registry uh, and tag it for a later usage. So that's the case for the two variables. Um, I added a before script. The before script um, updates my submodule. So it gets the newest code from the sk-doctor docker file, um, synchronizes it to uh, the, the pipeline, and only when there are changes, it will update the container file. Uh, we have five stages. Build, test, and release are for the docker file and conversion and deploy are later for the documentation. So the Docker build is just creating the image. Um, it will only run when there are changes in the Docker file, when the branch is master, and when the variable build container is set. So the build container variable I put in because I don't like to create the image every time when my documentation starts. So I included um, a scheduler which runs every Saturday, and, and this scheduler set this variable, and only when the file changes, it will update our um, Docker uh, image, and I think once a week is enough. When it will change more often, I will go to two or three times a week, but um, in the moment, that works quite good. Then we come to the test one and two in the test stage. It just runs two commands in our um, test or in our created uh, Docker uh, image. And when these are successful, I release that image. So um, I tag it and move it to the included registry of GitLab. So, and then we can use that, um, that image. That is that part. And now to the conversion stage. We are in the conversion stage, we uh, convert the documents and like before, we run um, local pass slash documents personal, uh, personal mounted to documents and the image folder mounted to images and the script folder to scripts and then run, so where is my, there. And then we run in scripts a PDF conversion, a conversion SH. So that was the reason I have only once my images directory and then I go through my folders. It's not optimized in the moment, so I run a Docker process each time for each folder. For, so for my personal ones for PDF, for my work ones for PDF, and then for HTML work and HTML personal. Um, but the only reason is I need all four artifacts to push them to GitLab, uh, to the Git pages. Um, you can split that up, but um, for the demo here, I just used the more resource using, but easier way here. Um, after the conversion, we copy all PDF files to public PDF personnel. I defined artifacts. PDF personnel and that parse, uh, and after two hours it will just delete the artifact. We use the artifact some lines later to um, copy everything which is in artifacts to the Git pages. And here that except is, this will only run when the build container is not set. Before we used um, only when the variable is set. So conversion only when the docker build is not running. Then, then the same for PDF work and HTML. We create the presentations. And now the last point is the pages. We, um, I defined some dependencies here. So 
that needs as a dependency the PDF and HTML conversion. It will copy the images to public so that we have it for the HTML uh, output. We take everything from artifacts and um, then push to git pages. And as before, only when it's in the master branch. So I have, it will not publish when I'm in a development, uh, develop or any branch which is not named master. So only my, um, yeah, master branch is really pushed to a, a public web server. But you can create different um, publication points that you say, okay, I have a branch develop and that documentation for develop is put to a different web server internally in my, web, uh, in my uh, environment. I can check that, uh, read over it, and maybe I have to change something. So that's pretty much that. And how does it look? That's this one. We see the pipelines. Now it's passed. The three ones are the Docker files. Or yeah. So Docker build in the build pay, uh, in the build stage. The two test uh, jobs in the um, test uh, stage, and then the release. So only when uh, the two test uh, stage no, when the test stage is successful, it will release the image to the registry. Same for that one. So that's the conversion. We convert HTML, PDF personal, PDF work, and the presentation files, and we will uh, create the pages, copying the images, and then deploy to the GitLab pages. So and I hope I see it now. There was... Uh, what is I had to switch my desktop before the talk, and I hope... Let me check. Nah, not really net. Oh, let me check. Project settings, I think. Package. Um, ah, this, that's the reason. That's what's interesting. I need my phone. <laughs> Always these two-factor stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I th I'm not sure about the Apple ones. Um, where is my GitLab here? 1656. So now settings pages. And now we have the link. And let's check the main example for HTML and the main example for PDF. So that's the HTML output with the table of contents on the of the left side. On the left side, I have the same one for my private. Is this one? There, I use the oh, no talk. Um, you can use table of contents be, uh, below the document title or um, with that theme uh, at the left side, so I can navigate a little bit easier. Um, we see our network plan, we see captions, passwords, and so on. Syntax highlighting, um, as I promised. And when we check the, the PDF one, we can include our company logo here. We can include the name. And let's have a look at the network plan. It's here. And I want to show the syntax highlighting. It's here. So. There's the included source file. Uh, syntax highlighting is working like in the HTML one. So uh, 
you can publish it, you can mail it to, to customers, to your colleagues, or just store it in a wiki as you want. So, just for the slides, um, I included the, the GitLab file with some explanations. We already saw that live. That's an example conversion script. We saw the pipeline. Oh, um, we only saw uh, past pipelines. Um, they can fail when parts are not available, when you have a typo or something like that. So no typo in the documentation, but typos in your commands. Uh, it will not generate artifacts then. Uh, available artifacts um, are marked with that cloud symbol there. So in the normal time frame, I think I defined two hours, you can download the artifacts directly or you just watch them on the um, Git pages. Demo, we already did that. Um, some information here, yeah, reveal.js. Uh, a really cool documentation uh, which is based on ASCII Doctor is the Fedora documentation. It's, uh, it uses one more tool, it uses Antora, antora.org. Um, and Antora can generate uh, documentation from multiple Git repositories. So it just grabs the stuff from everywhere where you define um, the Git repositories and then create one uh, big documentation out of all of them. So you can define teams. So one team creates the web server uh, documentation, another one, the kernel ones, and then you put everything together on one main page. Some additional links. Uh, the repo we used here, the doc tool chain, I think that's pretty much all. Yeah, so I was really fast today. Um, questions? So, at Sobi Kwan's matter. Is is that working now? Okay. So, uh, you said um, if you can't see the icons in the document, yeah. you have to look at the uh, whitelist. Uh, uh, it's a whitelist. It, uh, only for the. I, I haven't said that, um, but I, it was on the slide. Let me check. It was. It was the preview one there. Um, the browser extension has a really secure setting in the per default. So when you use a local file, uh, it will not show the font awesome uh, font icons because it needs to download it from the internet. And so it's just the um, same origin uh, policy of the browser, which does not download it. So you can switch the, the browser extension from, I think, secure to not so secure, and then it will download the font files. It's oh. just a preview one. So okay. no, it's only for that. So more questions? Yeah. So. Hi. I always have to generate uh, PDFs. Yeah. Um, and uh, I always get um, page breaks at the wrong positions. Um, and I have tried a lot of markup languages, and I haven't found anything, or any language, or any syntax to properly control page breaks, uh, to keep uh, paragraphs and pictures together. In mm -hmm. the same page. I, I think the only language I can remember where you can define that is LaTeX. In, in tech there, it's pos you can nearly define everything to, to get page breaks together, but I think there is nothing similar in ASCII Doctor. No. So, then, ow. <laughs> so. I much enjoyed your talk and the presentation. Thanks, Thanks. for it. Um, I'm also interested in this, uh, you said you can generate this presentation itself. Yeah. Um, is it just straightforward or do I need to take a little bit of care what to write in because different kind of uh, aspect ratio or maybe interactivity or something like that? So we can look at the source code of that talk. So it's the, the header like before. Um, and then let's have an example here. Yeah, so when you look at, so here we start with the, the document title or the slide title. 
Um, with that include, I just include my slide background because I normally have my company logo in the, on every page. So um, I defined slide is just that uh, the variable slide just points to um, ASCII doc file where I have the background defined. Then we have the bullet points and we can add some speaker notes with this note.speaker and that's pretty much all. You can use the default CSS and start with that. I generated a custom CSS file because I like to position my images a little bit different and sometimes uh, float an image to the left or right. Uh, so I include, let's check, um, roll. Uh, for example, here. No, that's not a good example. Next. That one, that's a source part, and I, um, so definition is bracket source, is normally just a, a, a in included source um, code for syntax highlighting. When we add that role here, um, it generates a CSS clause in the output. So there is a CSS clause half, and I defined um, when there is a clause half, the width of the object is just 45%, and so it just jumps to the left. But um, you don't need to use that, so it's just easier for presentation. But the default uh, CSS are great, so um, depends on on the, the on the speaker if you like that or not. But um, I, I think the main advantage here is, as I said, I define here. I define the variable slide here. Uh, strange color highlighting. So my um, slide variable points to slide GPN 19 ADOC and there I defined, okay, there is no background. But when I put there a background is company logo at the top right or uh, an image which points to the whole slide, it will generate that background on each slide where I included the slide uh, variable. And so each slide gets my uh, company logo and, and everything is fine. And when I go to the next conference, I just switch that from, from FrostCon to something else, do one run of my ASCII doctor um, command and get a completely new design slide deck. Or um, you see at title slide, uh, at three, four, and five here, um, Twitter tag, conference tag, and talk tag. Wh wh what, what happens here is you see at the bottom of the page, there's my Twitter handle, the talk tag, and um, uh, conference name and the talk tag. And so I, I just switch that th three lines, maybe the slide one, and I just get a, a newly branded slide deck. And when you ever tried that with PowerPoint, you will love that. <laughs> okay. Thanks. More questions? Ah. Shall I run? <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, yeah, just to add to your question, I was just looking up uh, GitHub issues. Uh, there is a keep together block uh, you can use, ah, as cool. it seems, to prevent uh, page breaks in, in blocks. Cool, thank you. We'll, we'll try that. Yeah, it's, it's often the, uh, the reason. Um, the main problem that I have is that my included property files or XML files are just pages long when I generate the PDF output and it's hard to read and to find the, the changed files. So I started to include just the changed three lines in the, in the normal text and then I do um, a last chapter where I include the complete files. And so the main advantage is when I, I commit a property file as a customer and I push it to the Git repo and I, I get it in my pipeline. It will generate the new documentation with all um, changed property files and um, I can mail it to the customer. I can just store it at my, my notebook or my, my artifacts and that's fine. I always know what they do. And it's always good when I say, okay, um, commit message. Um, I left the, uh, the the customer at four in the afternoon. No no changes. Last uh, changes committed to Git, and when then and there is an any error, I know they changed something. So it's just security for me. Yeah. So have a good trip home. Or do we have more questions? So then, thank you for being here. <laughs>